Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you one of the recent additions to Seblog, which is available on the store online, uh, which is the Select Dynamic Cascade Field, uh, which costs 30 euros and it's worth every cent because it allows you to have a series of fields that are dynamically populated based on the selections made in previous fields. Uh, and I'm going to go through today and show you how to set that up and how to use it on one of your sites. So uh, before this tutorial, I've already set up some stuff um, to go through, and that is um, I'm going to show you a basic example where we have a list of all the Australian states, and um, within those states, um, I've put the capital city. So when we select this, um, a state of Australia in the first field, then in the second field, it'll already have the um, it'll only have the options of the capital city within that state available to select. So what I've done is I've set up uh, a category called Australian states and then set up subcategories for each Australian state. And then in the article manager, I've added every um, capital city and associated them with the state that they're in. Okay. Now we'll go into Seblod and I'll show you the dynamic cascading fields. So I've set this up as a front end form. So we'll go into this countries cascade and you'll see the two fields here. There's the state and the city. Now for the state, here are the parameters that I've set up. As you can see, it's a dynamic cascade field. And I'll just go through some of these basic settings for you. There's a couple of settings here that I don't know what they do, uh, but I'll show you the ones that I, I do know. So the group name is important. That associates a whole bunch of cascading fields together. So for your cascading form sequence, you need this to be the same for all of the fields that belong to that sequence. Now for your first level um, of field, you want to um, change this rank to first, as I've done here with my states, and leave that as construction. And then we're going to um, enter the parameters in here that we, that we need to. So what we want to be doing is we want to be searching our categories table, because that's what I set up the states as, their categories, where the parent ID is equal to 11. Now, if I just flick over to the database quickly, you can see that in the categories table, the uh, field with, I mean, the, the entry with an ID of 11 is my Australian states category and then every other field sits beneath that. So what we want to do is we want to search for all of the categories that have um, a parent category with the ID of 11 and that's what we've done there in this query. And here it's similar to um, other select boxes where you the options name uh, determines which um, value shows on the drop down list and the options value is what gets stored in the database. So because we're searching the categories table, we're going to use the title and you can see the title here. So these are all the titles of our states. And when it actually gets stored in the database, it's going to store the ID. And that's what we've entered there. And that's fine. So then you can go ahead and save that, um, that field. Now our city field is the last one in our sequence. Um, if we were going to have another um, level like suburb or whatever after this, then we would make this middle. But since we've only got two, we're going to make it the last field in the sequence. Of course, we've ca called this first group so that it's associated with the other um, fields. But this time we're going to search the, the content table and we're going to look for um, basically, we're going to say uh, whatever category ID was selected before, um, we're going to search the content table for anything that sits under it. So as you can see, if we um, go to the content table now, so you can imagine our first field, we select the category and it, is, it has an ID and now we want to search the content table for the same category ID and then bring up whatever value is associated with that category ID, which you can see here. And similarly, we want it to um, show the options of the titles and store the options of the ID. So um, 
we leave these settings like this. We put in the category ID here because um, that's what's going to determine this field and we set the title and the ID there and click Save. So we save that and now because I've already um, got all of those entries in my um, category and article managers, we'll go to the front of the website and we'll see here's two drop down boxes. The first one here already has all of our, um, our states in it and you can see that if I don't select anything there, I don't have any options here for city, but as soon as I select Queensland, for example, then I get Brisbane and none of the others. If I select Northern Territory, I get Darwin and so on. And that's a really basic example of how to set up uh, cascading fields. So I encourage you for any site that you need it, uh, spend the money. It might seem like a lot, but it's really not for how much power this gives you. Uh, it's a really fantastic plugin to use, um, and hopefully this has helped you to get off uh, on the right foot and um, and start using it. Of course, we um, we don't necessarily need to have the stuff set up in Joomla. You can set up a completely um, standalone table in your directly in your database and just use the the table rows. I mean the table um, column headers um, as those different values and create cascading fields that just pull information straight out of your database without having to enter the stuff into Joomla, which is fantastic. And I've got a site coming up um, which will be showcased on Seblod, which uses that. So keep an eye out for that. Anyway, uh, happy Seblodding.